right, I've decided to give Final Cut Pro another go because the other day I was trying to fiddle about with something in Premiere and it just wasn't working whatsoever. Crashed three or four times, so frustrating. So I downloaded the 90 day free trial of Final Cut Pro again. That's right, I did it about a year ago. I was convinced I was gonna swap. Um, there's a video about it up there, probably pointless watching to be fair, so you don't have to click it. Since then, I changed my workflow slightly. So I now convert all my 4K footage to ProRes and it just runs so much better in Premiere. So that, that helped, that was step number one. Step number two was I now use a SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD drive to run my projects off. So I put all of my footage and my project folder files all onto that hard drive. Uh, it's super quick because it's SSD. And then once I've finished that project, I then dump all everything, all of the files onto another external hard drive, a normal hard drive with loads of space. So that goes on there, frees up space on my SSD for the next project. So that's what I've done. Big difference, massive difference. Export times are meant to be quicker in Final Cut. I thought I'd give it a go, another go, but I forgot how daunting it was when you open a new editing software, how difficult it is to get used to. No idea what I'm doing. Now I know a few people that use Final Cut and swear by it, so I thought I'd ask them for their help. Hello. All right, man. All right, pal. How's it going? Not bad, not bad. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just filming. Filming some stuff, editing some stuff, final cut, you know the deal. Listen, on that note, actually, perfect timing. I'm giving Final Cut Pro another go, and I need all the help I can get. Realise I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. So I need your expertise. Are you up for it? I'm 100% up for it. Send me over awesome, whatever man. questions you've got. There's plenty of them. All right, cheers, man. See you later. See you later. So if you are a Premiere Pro user and you're thinking of making the switch to Final Cut Pro and you're like me and a little bit stuck, you've probably got a number of things that you do in Premiere Pro to make editing quicker and you want to find out if you can do those things in Final Cut Pro. And they're my main questions because there's so many things that I do within Premiere Pro to speed up my editing workflow and so many little tools that I use within the program that help me edit quicker. So all of the things that I want to ask Morgan are based on my editing workflow, but hopefully some of them will answer your questions as well. So let's go straight into the questions and see what we can find out. Ripple edits are lifesavers. They've sped up my workflow so much and saved me so much time. I've become a quicker editor just from using these little things. So I have Ripple edits set up, and I'll talk about these in another video, you can see them up here. But I, I have Ripple edits set up so that you can delete what's on the left side of the playhead and then it will move that clip to where the start of that clip was, if it makes sense. And then also if you click W, this is what I've got it set up as well, you can delete what's on the right hand side of the playhead. And then again, everything moves up to the end of that clip. You can also do ripple delete, where you delete a middle clip and everything snaps together like that. So super easy, it's helped me so much. I wanna know if there's anything like that in Final Cut Pro. Okay, so for this particular Reddit, you wanna press N on your keyboard and activate that magnetic timeline. Take your playhead and put it to exactly where you want to cut the clip. So you then drag the clip from either the left or the right side, depending on which bit you wanna trim out, and to the playhead, and it will automatically snap on the playhead and cut it all out. Unfortunately, it's just not as simple as pressing W or something like that to delete something. So Premiere, you, you get a win on that one. Another little editing thing I noticed on Final Cut was when you have a bunch of clips on a bottom layer and then some clips above, if you want to delete one in the middle, you can't just delete it without the other clips snapping together. Whereas on Premiere Pro, everything stays where it is. It's almost like, there's a magnetic timeline, but even when you turn the magnetic timeline off, that still happens. You then have to go in, or it seems like you then have to go in, press P to, for position, and then move that clip. But what if you wanted it, if you didn't want it to move in the first place? 
It's just all a bit clunky. Okay, so if you have a clip that's in the centre of two other clips and you want to delete it, but you don't want the magnetic timeline to snap it back together, you have to press P on your keyboard to select the position tool, then press FN and delete on that clip. Now, if you just want to move that clip to somewhere else but not have it affect the timeline, you just press P and then drag that clip somewhere else and it will automatically create a blank grey card for you to uh, use as a placeholder. In Premiere Pro, you can use a pen tool. Just press P and then your cursor turns into a pen and you can make little adjustments on your clip. So, for example, if you want to do a fade in or a fade out, you just click on that clip on the little line there and you can add that fade and it's set to opacity as default but you can also change the effect to whatever you want so it could be speed or anything like that and then you just adjust it using the pen tool super quick and simple to do what do we do in final cut okay so in final cut we don't have any of that kind of stuff we don't press p and then we get a pen and we have to make our in and out points on final cut we go over to the transition section go into your dissolves drag a fade to color on to the beginning or in between two clips or even at the end and then just drag that transition to adjust how long the actual transition takes. Another thing that I find really helpful in Premiere Pro is hiding the clips using the little eye icon because sometimes you've got loads of layers and you want to hide one of the top layers for example and see what's underneath see what which one you prefer. I don't know if there's anything like that in, Prem in Final Cut Pro I keep getting them mixed up but if there is, that'd be super handy because that's something I use a lot. Okay, so if you're working with multiple layers of video and you want to see the selected video below one of those layers, go to the one that you don't want to see, select it and press V. There we go, that'll just cut out and stop you from seeing it. So now you can see everything that's below that layer. Just press V. I love using adjustment layers for my footage because I might have edited all my clips together and then it's nice and easy to put a color grade on top of all of those without dropping something in or going in and editing all the clips separately or copy and pasting something. So you can just drag an adjustment layer over the top of all that footage and, and extend it all the way across. And then you do your adjustments to that layer and it affects all of the clips underneath. Super simple. Can we do that in Final Cut Pro? Unfortunately, Final Cut doesn't have that, so you have to buy an extension, which is about 50 quid, for Motion. Now, it's Apple's version of After Effects. Now, to save you all 50 quid, I've gone and made a adjustment layer for you to download from Sam's website. So there will be a link in the description if you want to go ahead and download that adjustment layer. So when I'm using LUTs in Premiere Pro, you've got an intensity level, and you can dial back or add the intensity of that LUT. So if you don't like the look of it, but you like the colors, you can just dial it back a little bit and get the precise look that you want to go for. I've not seen anything like that in Final Cut, but it'd be interesting to know how people use the LUTs. Now, as far as I know, on this one, you can't actually change the intensity of the uh, camera LUT that you put on, but you can change the intensity of a custom LUT that you put on there. I wanna know how you copy and paste the assets from one clip to another clip or multiple clips. For example, in Premiere Pro, you can right click and press copy and then select a bunch of clips or one clip, right click and paste attributes. You can then select which attributes you want to paste into that clip or clips. Super easy, saves so much time. What's Final Cut Pro do for that? Okay, so if you wanna take the effects from one clip and put it onto another, even down to the audio, you select that clip that you made all your adjustments on, you press Command C and then Option and Command V on the clip that you want to paste it onto. And that will paste all of your effect settings even down to the audio. So it's as simple as Command C, Option Command V. So one thing I really like about Premiere Pro is how the audio window is laid out. I've actually got my levels of my audio right next to my timeline so I can see, it's a nice big display, I can see exactly where my audio levels are hitting because I like to keep an eye on that throughout and make sure nothing's clipping. I can also go into my audio window that I've set up and see everything and change out anything that I need and add my presets or any plugins that I might want to use. And I have seen that people have got the levels next to the timeline 
So that'll be interesting. Okay, so if you want to see your audio meters, your audio levels in a much bigger section, then you would go just underneath your video viewer. There is the time code, and just to the right hand side of that is two little grey bars. Now, if you press on those grey bars, it will bring up the audio meters in the bottom right of your final cut. So you can see it way more clearly than just underneath your video browser. While we're on the subject of audio, I'm gonna show you how you can get your audio lanes up. So in Premiere Pro, you import your clips and the audio comes pre-detached so that you've got, every, you can see everything in its own chunks. Now in Final Cut, your audio and your video come as one clip. Now, not everybody loves that. So if you go to the very top of the screen, click on view and then press show audio lanes, that will automatically detach every single clip's audio so that you can see more clearly your audio lanes and your video lanes and just breaks things up nice and uh, clearly. In Premiere Pro, you can open a, a number of sequences in one window. So sometimes I like to work on an Instagram story edit, for example, where I've got a, a portrait dimension clip ready to go, or a 1080p version or a 4K version, and it's nice and easy to switch between within the same project. So I've still got all my footage files, but then I can swap those about and move them into the different sequences without having to open something new. So I really like that feature. Can you do that in Final Cut or do you have to open a new project? Okay, so on the left hand side of Final Cut is your browser which shows you your libraries and your projects. Now this is how you quickly access your project. So you'll have a project, project one, project two, project three, all in a single library or you can create separate libraries to create different projects. Now to quickly slip between each and every project you go down to the timeline section just underneath the video that you're editing and you can use the little arrows on the left hand side and the right hand side to jump between projects that are in the library that you have selected. Something that I use all the time because I hate the sound of my own voice, hate watching my footage back. Um, so anything to speed that process up is a big time saver. But I've got it set up so that if you press F, I think it's shuttle forward and it basically plays your footage back quicker. So you don't have to sit through you talking in real time, for example, you can speed it up and that's so much, it's a time saver, it's amazing. But you press it again and it speeds it up again. So anything like that in Final Cut Pro? Yeah, this might be a win for Premiere. It's so interesting to see the differences between the two programs and hopefully they'll start to merge together and each one will take the best parts from the other and be able to do those because they've both got some great features. I just I just hope the transition is easy because if I do switch to Final Cut Pro, it'll save me a lot of money and also a lot of time. We'll see how I get on with it after using these tips. Thanks so much to Morgan for recording these and answering my questions for me. Definitely go and check his channel out. I'll put a link up here to his video. Deserves so many more subscribers. He's a really good YouTuber, really good photographer, so go and check him out. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully if you're new to Final Cut Pro from Premiere Pro, this video will help. So thanks again for watching. Stay tuned and have a good one. All right, thanks a lot, man. Sound, right, send me the videos. Will do. See you later. See you later. <laughs> Mate, stay on the line. Because <laughs> I've, no, I've got no idea how we're going to do this. <laughs> I forgot to press record on the camera. I pressed it on the Atomos, but not the camera, so the camera shut down like halfway through the phone call. Nice one, man. This can be the behind the scenes. This bit can be the behind the scenes. Yeah, this, yeah. Well, I stopped. So I, I stopped recording after we pretend put the phone down. Oh no! I Maybe stopped we should it. do it. I'm again. still going. Should we do it again? If you want, yeah. All right, let's do it again. I'll ring you back in a sec. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, man. How's it going? Good. I feel like it's exactly the same. <laughs> Deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I nearly went. Alright, see you in a bit. Cheers.